Hey everybody, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. I am continuing my series called Then and Now. Next up is Ronnie James Dio. Now I did a whole beautiful version of this already, uploaded it to YouTube, it was okayed or green lighted by different publishing companies, and then it got blocked. So I had to redo the whole thing using some different footage. I wished I had the footage that I had up initially, but I'm aware that the uh, Ronnie James Dio documentary is coming out soon. I guess it's been suspended for a couple years through COVID. Um, and so they probably have some of the footage themselves they want to keep proprietary, which I understand. Uh, so I pick and chose the footage that I could use, but I got some good stuff here for you. I just want to dive right in. So this is Ronnie then. Here we go. Okay, now, before I move on to now, um, that was obviously back in like 1977. The, they sped up Man on the Silver Mountain quite a bit. He doesn't, he doesn't have a man, you know, that you know, kind of thing he came into later in the 80s. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but we're gonna go to now or later in life, and let me just play the clip, and then I wanna, I'm not gonna, actually gonna play them both back to back after we hear the second version of it, because I wanna talk about it, here we go. Cool. Now, I'm going to go back to the beginning one more time and let's just play them both back to back. Here we go. All right, and then we're gonna get back to, to the, the 80s. So, so instead of going like back to the 70s and later and back to the 70s, I thought it would be kind of cool to get into his prime, which is more like the early 80s, mid 80s. Now, you guys can tell, obviously, there's something called presbyphonia or the uh, aging voices, so it's called. He certainly had his voice was aged, um, but this was in 2005, so he's coming right up on, you know, having stomach cancer. Uh, I don't know if he knew he already had it. I don't know if he'd already been dealing with it. I don't know a lot about that part of his, his health uh, history, but I do know that... Um, that he's still holding it together. They obviously lowered the key. He was struggling a little bit with some notes. But I also am aware of a, a couple of different um, uh, analysis that I've done and you can look at it and I'll put all of the different DO analysis. In fact, what I'll do is in the description, if you guys want, I'm gonna put everything I've done by DO. So my own self-singing DO, my own uh, analysis, analysts, <laughs> analytics of Dio. I'll put all the different things in there because there were a couple later shows he did with Black Sabbath, like the Mob Rules. I've got one that's, I think I called it like the best live concert I've ever seen from a vocalist. And that was later in his years. So it could be also Bad Night kind of stuff. A couple of my buddies on there, you got Rudy Sarzo on bass, uh, Doug Aldrich, who's also played in a couple of my records, you know, in the band. So um, I've got a, a definite affinity and, and, and a love for, you know, just the music that had gone on in this time. Anyway, so enough about me. Let's let's uh, continue on here. Now we're gonna go and get into the 80s. So check this out. Here we go. Okay, now I wanna, so if you notice it, lightning, and when he's got it, and roar, 
Boom, right? One minute he has a really nice, bright, clear tone uh, in his younger years or in his prime. And then later you can hear, you know, a coloring of the sound, a thickness in the throat, uh, a gurgling, almost like it, you know, there's a lot of mass that's been built up and a lot of force, just a lot of force in the throat. Now, I've said it many times that Ronnie even lasted all the way up into his later years with cancer and stuff. That is and isn't quite totally true. Now, I want to give Ronnie all the respect. I'm not going to worship him as a deity, even though he calls himself Dio. But I do want to say that clear out, straight out, with few exceptions, maybe only a handful, he's probably the greatest metal or rock and roll metal vocalist, heavy vocalist that's ever lived. Maybe the greatest as far as his overall tone, the bigness of his sound, his intonation, uh, pitch, his range, uh, coloration in, in, in his vocals, his consistency life. So we are now talking about, you know, the, the literally the greatest rock and roll voice that's ever lived. Now, I'm not, not to take anything away from the Dickinsons and the Sandy Hagar's and the Coverdales and the Paul Rogers and all these other guys that are obviously amazing. But as far as the sheer size of his voice, now the reason I bring this up is because of that, over time, a big voice is really hard to manage, okay? And without proper care of managing that voice and taking care of it over time, the bigger the voice, the harder it is to manage over time, okay? So we're kind of seeing a little bit of that here. So let's move on. This is uh, coming up on Last in Line in 1986. So here we go. Here's to the witch. Okay, now, did you notice if you critically go back and listen to it? One minute, he's very sobre, bright, light, airy, young, and real frontal on the sound, and it's really clear and bright. And even in a few short years, you can hear a darkening and kind of a coloring of the sound, where the sound starts to sound like it's getting covered, as though he's singing through his jowls and in the front of his face, rather than all in the mask and up, up here. So you can really hear. Now, I want to do this again. I'm not, again, this is really not about... Uh, anything other than just it being interesting, okay? So here's from 2002 to 2005. It's only a three-year difference. So as he's starting to age, and again, cancer played a, obviously a, would play a huge role in anybody's, uh, you know, I don't know, career. Um, here we go. So that was, sorry, that was 2002. Now I wanna go back one more time and I'm just gonna let all of these play back to back. I don't normally do this, but I wanted to take some extra time out with Ronnie uh, cause he deserves it. You know, he's literally the, one of the greatest rock vocals that's ever lived, uh, maybe ever will live in the climate of today of a lot of people that don't wanna work at their craft like Ronnie has. So uh, I'm just gonna let it play all the way up to there and I want you to listen back and forth between juxtaposing and in contrast between uh, the two different eras of voice. So check this, listen for the brightness and the, air, the, the agileness or the clarity in the sound and listen to how it got thicker and thicker and thicker over time. Check it out. Here we go.
Hear that? The darkness? Okay, so the reason I, I, I'm doing this is not to, like I said, the goal and the point of this is not to show someone when they're cute and young and they're teens or 20s, early 30s or whatever, and then, oh, look what the old man, you know, what became of the old decrepit old man, he's just walking on a cane. Not true for Ronnie. He held it together as long as he could all the way to the end. Um, I do want to point out, though, that it, it it could have been different, I think, and except for the stomach cancer years, you know, right, of course, um, that the agility in the voice, and again, I talk about elasticity in the chords, and I talk about, you know, resiliency in the vocal folds, etc. Um, a lot of people said he was as good at the end as he was at the beginning no that's just not true now again there was the the mob rules uh, video I want you to check out please check it out I'm gonna put it in the description it's called the greatest performance I've ever seen or something I really want you to see that because this is also later uh, in his years but there was a quick atrophy of this that happened um, you know up around 2005 or from 2002 to 2005 where it took a pretty sharp turn uh, but then he was also you know up in his years too now I don't want to make this about a technical thing so but I will say that I believe that preservation of the voice could have been better over time um, if that had been taken care of in a different kind of way. But then again, he's Ronnie James Dio, and there were probably there will be there will not be another uh, Ronnie I believe that will ever walk this planet uh, from a vocal standpoint. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, sorry, I had an original one that, like I said, I had made before. Um, it got blocked, so I had to make another one. Uh, but I think this is a pretty good example of, of the awesomeness of Ronnie, his longevity, and I. I I encourage you, if you guys are a Ronnie James Dio fan, uh, definitely check out his documentary when it comes out. I'm not even sure when this is going to release. I'll probably release it in the next month or two um, right now. And this is what, the middle of February, the beginning of February, February 10th. Um, anyway, so, uh, but thank you for joining me and definitely stick around and check out my next video.